Um, today I'm going to tell you about the inventions that got Nobel Prize in Physics this year. There were two Nobel Prizes in Physics awarded, both for groundbreaking inventions in the field of laser physics. So one half went to Arthur Ashkin for the creation of optical tweezers, and another half to Jared Moreau, and then a Strickland for invention of femtosecond lasers. Uh, maybe for some of you, laser uh, would sound like death rays as they usually appear in popular culture. Like, for example, in Star Wars, it is um, used a lightsabers to fight their enemies. And, for example, in other cult series, Star Trek, laser beams were used to retrieve very small objects in outer space and uh, to manipulate uh, without touching them. Even though it might sound like pure science fiction, it actually didn't uh, go far from reality, and mostly thanks to the invention that got Nobel Prize in Physics this year. But before going to the details of those inventions, uh, I will start with the basics just to make sure that we are all on the same page. And if you ever wonder what laser stands for, laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So I will start with the light. So light is a wave, and Every wave transports the energy. One of the characteristics of a wave if, is its amplitude. So it's the head of the peak. And the amplitude defines how much energy the wave transports. So the higher the amplitude, the higher the energy. Another characteristic is its wavelength. Wavelength is the distance between the two peaks. And light or with different wavelengths you perceive as light uh, of different color. Also, the wavelength defines the propagation speed in several substances, like, for example, the red, component, uh, the red light would uh, propagate faster in, several in some substances than a uh, blue component. Uh, one of the simple examples of a light device is a light bulb. So light bulb emits white light, so it's a mixture of different waves, uh, different wavelengths that is covered in different directions. Even though this light transmits the energy, the energy is, um, the impact of this energy is not high enough. And it's solely because the light is not synchronized. So just imagine your car got bulked on the Modi road, and, but there are some people who might help you, and they would push, they will, they will all would push the car in different time and in different directions, you wouldn't make it. But if you can organize them to push the car in one direction and at the same time, you would succeed. So the same applies to the light. If you can have um, light, if you can have waves of one wavelength uh, going in one direction, you would have a much higher, much more powerful source of light. How did scientists? So it would be called laser. How did scientists come up? Uh, how did scientists create lasers? So first, they found, they discovered there, that there are some materials that emit light of certain wavelengths. Um, but these materials would create the laser body, and then scientists would make this laser body. They would stimulate it with uh, electric current and make it produce the light constantly. Then they would put two mirrors, two curved mirrors, to trap the light and to align it in one direction. And in fact, one of the mirrors would be half transmitting mirror um, that would allow some light to escape, but only light of a certain direction and of certain phase would be allowed to pass through. And this is the idea behind the continuous wave lasers. That's how scientists create continuous phase lasers. Um, so uh, lasers have very high, um, a very high power source. But of course, they wanted to have more power. And they came up with another idea. So they came up with uh, pulse lasers. So imagine you can close one of these transmitting mirrors, and there would be energy accumulated inside of the laser body. Uh, so it wouldn't go out once it got directed in one direction. And then they would open this mirror 
and all the accumulated light, all the accumulated energy would escape at, this, at one time and in a very short time. That's how scientists got pulsators. They would um, transfer more energy, but soon they faced one limitation. It was impossible to collect uh, energy in the, uh, inside of this, inside of the laser body, um, above some certain threshold energy, because it would simply destroy the laser body. And the invention that got Nobel Prize in physics this year helped overcome this limitation. But before going to the details of this invention, let's uh, have a closer look at, at the pulse. So even though laser is a the source of one wavelength, pulse is in fact uh, a superposition of several wavelengths. And it's because, it happens because uh, the pulses um, have very short duration and at such short time scale, quantum mechanics and the principle of uncertainty that was described by Heisenberg comes into play. Even though you wouldn't perceive the difference um, in the color of those wavelengths that, the, that comprise the pulse. Just for better visual representation, I marked the wavelengths with higher, uh, with longer wavelengths as a red component, and the one with the shorter wavelengths is a blue component. And as I mentioned before, red component and blue component would differ with different speed in several substances and several materials, and it means that certain certain conditions can be created that this difference can be enhanced and the, and the pulse can be stretched in time and by those the energy would be stretched in time as well and the peak power would be decreased and the same is true for the reverse process this stretched pulse by minimizing the difference in the propagation speed this pulse can be compressed back to short pulse these two processes are the fundament for, of the invention that got Nobel Prize this year. Um, Donna Strickland and Jared Moreau, they came up with an idea to introduce an amplifier between these two processes. Let's see what happens. So, a short pulse got stretched, then um, the power peak got decreased because the energy got stretched in time as well. It means that this stretched time, this stretched pulse can be further amplified without damaging the amplifier because the energy is much lower. It means that you would get a stretched amplified pulse that would contain more energy and this stretched pulse can be compressed back to a short pulse but this short pulse would have would contain more energy than the seed pulse than the initial pulse. Um, yeah. So this is how Donna <laughs> Strickland and Jordan Moreau uh, overcame the limitations and it allowed creation of femtosecond lasers. So femtosecond lasers have, like, femtosecond pulse have a duration of femtosecond. Femtosecond is uh, 10 in the order of minus 15 second. And just, um, uh, I wanted to fill the time scale. So 10 in the order of minus 15 second refers to relates to one second as one second relates to 32 billion years. So it's a lot. Uh, and these femtosecond lasers, they, uh, they allowed, they made it possible to cut and drill um, holes in various materials, even in living matters, and the, and the heating area and the shock waves are so negligible, negligibly small for femtosecond lasers that femtosecond lasers can be used on even very sensitive materials such as human eye. Therefore, femtosecond lasers are now routinely used in corrective eye surgery, so like to restore um, your vision, your sight. And but beside that, femtosecond lasers. Um, Femtosecond lasers are now a gateway to completely new research areas in physics, in chemistry, and biology. So it was, it is a very great tool. So I explained the femtosecond lasers. 
the invention that brought Nobel Prize this year to Jared Moreau and Donna Strickland, the other half went to Arthur Oshkin for creation of optical tweezers. Conventional tweezers are usually used in laboratories when there is a need to manipulate with very small objects, when it's very hard to manipulate with them with just bare hand. And what if you want to manipula manipulate with even smaller objects than that? So Ashkin realized that continuous faint lasers would make a perfect tool to move such small objects. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into the details of physics of these trapping effects, but if you're really interested in this, you can catch me during the break and we can discuss it. But yeah, Arthur Ashkin, with his optical tweezers, actually opened a new world of applications in chemistry and physics and biology. And the main breakthrough was that scientists can now um, trap and move and pull and absorb the objects, small objects, without even touching them. Like, for example, in this video, you can see two red blood cells, probably human red blood cells, and um, they were trapped with laser tweezers. One was fixed in space and another one was pulled. And the same can be, can be performed on any other small objects, including even DNA. <coughs> Yeah, so optical tweezers that was created by Arthur Oshkin and and ten second later that were created by Jared Moreau and Donna Strickland. These are the invention that got Nobel Prize in physics this year. These are the invention that revolutionized both basic research and practical applications. And I would encourage you to learn more about what exact what epoch they made in physics and in chemistry and in biology. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. So we have time for some questions. So someone would like to ask a question? Uh, please. Hi. Uh, can you use this femtosecond laser for two second two photon microbes, microscopy? Totally. Totally? Yeah. <laughs> how, fast is it? Sorry. how fast is it? I mean, uh, so two questions. So, yeah. you, can you reach deeper tissue with this? So, I have, I, I have a note. So, yeah. is it possible to formulate it in a way everyone understands what the question was about? Um, or so, if, if, so, no, if, if you. So, two photon excitation microscopy actually is fun fact. My boss is the one who created two photon excitation microscopy. Oh <laughs> but he doesn't do like microscopy anymore. Uh, so to put on excitation microscopy is the principle that, um, yeah. <laughs> you, you can get in contact with it after because okay. it seems to be very very advanced physics. So someone else has a, has a question. Uh, hello. So uh, I'm interested in knowing how both of the discoveries are related in the Nobel Prize? So, they both used laser, uh, lasers, but so the first part, like Arthur Oshkin, optical tweezers, he used continuous wave lasers, like the one that like, I explained at first, so we uh, opened uh, transmitting mirror like all the time, and the second one, the, uh, Jared Moreau and Donald Strickland, they got Nobel Prize yeah, so for femtosecond lasers, and it's pulse laser, so, it's lasers, but the applications have been different. It's all about lasers. Yeah, all about lasers. <laughs> and so we have time to walk. Just a question. One, just three one. I didn't quite understand. So Could you please yeah. take microphone? Oh, yeah, thanks. I didn't quite understand. Uh, so, with this femtosecond laser, mm -hmm. they extend the wave, then they compress it, and it contains more energy? So, they uh, stretch the wave, yeah. put more energy. So. Uh, the pulse, um, the pulse was short, and the peak energy was high. When you stretch the pulse, you basically stretch it in time, and because of the conservation of the energy, the energy got stretched in time as well, and the peak power got decreased. So, and because the, uh, the energy is much la is lower, you can amplify it further without damaging the amplifier. And so then you get this. 
uh, stretched pulse, but it got amplified, it, got, it contains more energy now, and when you stretch it back to the short pulse, the short, this um, final short pulse would contain more energy than the first one that, that got amplified. Okay, so thank you. It, sorry, uh, we don't have more time. It's not <coughs> energy, this, uh, this material, I just didn't get why it's not energy, this material. Because the energy is less, so the but point is... It emits uh, more energy. Um, I think you can get in contact later and ah, okay. this kind of discussion we need to go on. Yeah. Sorry, but thanks. <laughs> so, thank you, Marie. So, let's